Thank you for being here. It is Grimm's Day. We are Legends of Avantress, and we will see you in the mist. There's always a calm before the storm, but what about after? Even when the violence is done and the battles are won, is there ever really any peace? Why do they never talk about the calm after the storm? I guess we'll find out. This story began with a ride aboard a ghost train. Each of you, besides Jorgrim, had been going about your own lives. When one by one, the Ghostlight Express emerged from the fog and stopped beside you. You were each greeted by the train's mysterious conductor, a vagabond frogman who introduced himself only as the Vagrant. He collected a strange train ticket that had mysteriously appeared on each of your persons, and you were, and you were all, all aboard the Ghostlight Express. You all journeyed through the mists. And once you joined together, the increasingly violent aberrations from outside the train smashed through the windows and corrupted the hollow souls of the dead who had been your fellow passengers. You sprang into action, and your subsequent victory proved that your forces combined were far more powerful than alone. The Ghost Light Express concluded its journey, and you, and, and you arrived in Druskenwald, a mysterious realm of eternal night imprisoned in the lands of death. The first thing you noticed was the enormous leering moon in the sky with the face of a gnarled hag hanging in the sky. The vagrant bid you farewell and left you on a foggy train platform in the middle of the dark woods, where you heard the breaths and steps of an, of an enormous beast that seemingly chose not to attack. Soon, a black carriage driven by a headless coachman appeared before you and the door opened to a warm, inviting glow. Upon entering, you found a much larger space than you had expected, and it felt more like a gaudy jazz club than a stagecoach. Inside, you found a tall, thin man with slicked back hair, a pencil-thin mustache, and a dapper outfit complete with cane, topped with a silver goat skull. He was joined by an orc gravedigger who introduced himself as Jorgrim, and it was then that the party was complete. The man introduced himself as Lord Philip Druskenwald, the lord of the land and leader of the Crescent Court the government that oversees the 13 provinces of Druskenwald. He says there's a big problem that he needs help with, and that's why he's called you to this land. A coven of witches, known as the Coven of the Midnight Moon, has been terrorizing every province, and he needs witch hunters to put a stop to it. The coven is comprised of a witch named Mother Midnight and her 12 daughters, and since the coven began operating in Druskenwald, only the vagrant aboard the Ghostlight Express can get out, making the entrance to the dread domain effectively one way. In exchange for your services, he offered all of you an incredibly powerful artifact from his vast collection. You all agreed, and he brought you to a large manor home that had been abandoned for 20 years, giving you the key and the deed. The construction of the house was incredibly strange, leading the locals to call it the Crooked House, which they believed to be heavily cursed due to the mysterious vanishing of the former residents two decades prior. You were in the province of Fulcens, mainly populated by humans who were devout worshippers of the, the rigid god Foltest. 
Philip said he had business at the capital city of Cyril with Fulsense's lord, Archbishop Danton Alexander Renault. Left to explore your new home, you immediately discovered that the place was indeed cursed and were greeted by a specter who called himself the Crooked Man. As you explored the Crooked House, you discovered that it had been the home of the Lockwood family. The lady of the house, Petunia Lockwood, had received nightmares that slowly turned her wicked, and she became a devoted follower of the coven of the Midnight Moon, as a servant of the hag, Vesla Browntooth, who moved into the attic. The hag served Mother Midnight and helped to advance her dark plans. With help from the ghost of the family's butler, Petrini, you survived the horrors of the house, as well as the hag's weasel familiar, Filthy Jasper, and unearthed the secret of the house itself. Deep in the earth beneath the mansion was a chamber where an ancient wicked archfey was imprisoned in amber. This fey entity, Kellen of the Crooked Teeth, was being used effectively as a magical battery to power dark rituals conducted in the attic of the Crooked House. For years, human teeth were brought to the amber monolith as offerings to Kellen to increase the power that Vesla could siphon. The party discovered that Petunia was Vesla... That the party discovered that P Petunia and Vesla murdered the entire family in a night of sacrifice. And ever since, Vesla had been conducting dark rituals in service of the mysterious goddess Mother Night. The party eventually defeated Vesla and cleansed the crooked house, but not without accidentally freeing Kellen from her prison and witnessing her amorphous shape fleeing to parts unknown. After killing the hag, you learned she was just one of three and part of the vermin toll coven. The next night, Philip returned with his wife Adela, who promised to fix the house up for you as you investigated reports of Mother Midnight herself operating in Cyril and causing bewitching disease, famine, drought, and a general malaise over the entire province of Folsons. You bid farewell to the Druskenvalds, who were off to plan a grand masquerade for the Crescent Court. You only made it a day's worth of travel before an angry mob discovered you and took the problem with your relatively monstrous forms. Led by the charismatic and handsome William Van Brunt, the posse roughed you up, put you in chains, and dragged you into the heart of Cyril to bring you before the Archbishop himself. The Archbishop calmed the crowd and apologized to you, welcoming you to the city and thanking you for the assistance that Lord Philip had promised. That evening, you stayed at an inn, encountering Van Brunt once more, who then challenged Jorgrim to one-on-one -on -one combat. With the help of a hidden poison blade, Van Brunt was the victor. Later that night, the posse returned to finish the vigilante justice, after drugging you with a tainted candle. Before they could harm you, however, the mob was, dis was dispersed in a brutal and bloody way by an enormous half-giant called Hugo the Gargoyle. Once more, the Archbishop apologized for the people of full sense over an uncomfortable dinner and allowed you to stay with his sister Zephyrine Mirabelle, as well as her husband Francois and daughter Colette, for your protection, of course. Throughout your investigation of the city, you discovered that mysterious witch balls lurked in hidden places and were corrupting and making the townsfolk ill, especially affecting the children at the Cyril Orphanage. It was there that you met the precocious orphan Anya Adelaide, who took a liking to you, and the terse matron Maggie Macduff, who clearly had a problem with the Archbishop. You met the High Inquisitor of the city, responsible for the brutal witch hunts occurring in Cyril, and learned that the best lead was the widow Keziah Jenkins, whose husband died under mysterious circumstances. She had fled to the woods and was believed to be Mother Midnight in disguise. You ventured into the woods and found a strange hut and a horrible centipede familiar that skittered into the earth. You were then attacked by a masked Kajaya Jenkins, who unleashed powerful witchcraft on you before being defeated and knocked unconscious. You returned to the city and handed her over to the Inquisitor, who burned her and dozens of other alleged conspirators alive in a public execution. With Keziah's death, the hag moon shifted back to a normal moon, and the city celebrated that Mother Midnight had finally been killed. <laughs> that evening, there was debaucherous revelry, and in the disgusting displays, you happened upon the orphan Anya, alone and wandering the darkened alleyways. Fearing for her safety, you took her in for the night. You then awoke to the sounds of alarm bells. The orphanage was burning and every child had been killed in a pillar of flame as the hag moon returned once more. You had all been deceived. 
it was discovered that Maggie McDuff had been seen fleeing the city in the direction of the abandoned gold mine near Keziah's hut that had long been suspected of being inhabited by a witch. In retaliation, the Knights Templar, led by Captain Marco, rode out to the mine to bring her to justice, hoping to finally put an end to the curse on Folsons. However, when only their horses returned, it was clear that something was amiss, so you followed after and investigated the mines yourself. There, you found a putrid horror show as you discovered the knights transformed into horse abominations. Stone walls turned to flesh and awful creatures made from flesh-crafted victims. And of course, millions of horrible centipedes. Oh, At the bottom of the mine, you encountered the bloated centipede hag Stenoga Blackstinger. And if not for Maggie McDuff intervening with magic all her own, you would have been killed. Yeah. However... You barely survived and were able to join her back at Kaziah's hut where she revealed she was a witch, but one of the land, not the darkness. Mm. She introduced you to her familiar, the spirit rabbit named Flora, and told you that Kaziah had been a member of a coven of good witches along with her close friend and your patron, Zephyrine Mirabel. You all had the realization that Zephyrine would be in great danger in, Cyr in Cyril. You rushed back to the city, but were sadly too late. The Mirabelle house had been invaded. Francois was killed, his head smashed, his, his head smashed in like a gourd by Hugo's gigantic fist, and Zephyrine was taken by the Inquisitors. However, the child Colette was unharmed, and you sent her off to be protected by Maggie Macduff in her cabin in the woods. Having concocted an elaborate plan, you made a rescue attempt by sneaking into the jail and facing the Inquisitor in the depths of the dungeons. You found that Zephyrine had already been killed and sacrificed to Mother Night, along with the revelation that the High Inquisitor was the third and final hag of the Vermintal Coven, Golub Greygullet. After slaughtering her and killing the Hag Coven once and for all, you found grimoires that pieced together their plan. Seven Baylor demons imprisoned in amber beneath the cathedral, each one representing a, seven deadly si er, representing a deadly sin, were spreading their sinful influence throughout the city. And through some ritual, the sin would be offered upward to the moon and trigger something called the moonlit rebirth on the night of sin. The town was whipped up into hysteria and was frothing to find the witches that had been cursing the city. And soon mobs of town folk were roving the streets and committing brutal acts of vigilante justice, much of it riled up by William Van Brunt. You holed up in Keziah Jenkins' old house within the city, but discovered that Anya, whom you'd been looking after, had now gone missing. After being visited by the familiar Flora, you performed a ritual to steel yourself against the demonic influence of the Balor, which, <clears throat> while exploring each of your respective pasts, you were greeted by a vision of Mother Midnight herself, who showed you that Anya was imprisoned by the Archbishop in the catacombs beneath the cathedral. Immediately, you left your safe house as the posse began to smash down the door of the old house, and you snuck through the burning city to the cathedral, scaling the bell tower to infiltrate the fort fortress undetected. However, you were met by an enraged Hugo. Calming him down, you discovered that the archbishop had plunged a statue into his third eye, blinding his true sight. Your acts of kindness finally turned Hugo against his captor, and he confirmed that Anya was imprisoned below, so you rushed to confront the Archbishop. Upon confronting the Archbishop, he promised he did not have the girl, and that there was truly nothing to find in the catacombs. To prove this, he guided you through the cathedral, into the catacombs themselves, and to the chamber below. But sure enough, Anya was there. Yorgrim rushed toward the little girl, filled with fear and concern for her safety, and as, he, and as he approached, she began to transform and revealed her true form. Little Anya had been Mother Midnight transmogrified all along. In a flash, seven amber monoliths exploded to life, humming with a magical glow, the thrashing shapes of seven imprisoned Balor demons inside threatening to escape. Mother Midnight attempted to have you all possessed by six of these Balor to help her, usher in the Night of Sin. This would turn the entire city of Cyril into wicker abominations, and the feast of all of the city's sin would finally trigger the moonlit rebirth and bring Mother Midnight's plans to fruition. However, just as the demons began to possess you, the Maiden of Mist, Yorgrim's dark patron, guarded your souls, banishing the six Balor and unleashing a withering curse upon Mother Midnight. 
She fled the scene on her broom, but not before using the final monolith in Baloran's side to transform the archbishop into an enormous demonic gargoyle and instructing him to be the sole herald of the Knight of Sin. A brutal battle ensued against the transformed archbishop, who attempted to devour both you and all of the sin of the city. He gained the upper hand, but when all seemed lost, Hugo, his tormented ward, saved his new friends by smashing the bells of the cathedral upon the beast's head, causing him to change course. The demonic archbishop slammed Hugo against the catacomb walls and fled to the bell tower, where he would ring the bells and transform the inhabitants of Cyril into monstrosities of sin. You paused, but only for a moment. In an effort to save Hugo's life before pursuing the transformed Renault to the top of the bell tower, <coughs> engaging him in combat, in combat once more. The cacophonous bells filled all of you with feelings of sin as the entire city shrieked out in a dark revelry. In the end, you were able to overcome the curses and gravely wound him. In one final attempt to fulfill his dark bargain with Mother Midnight, he attempted to flee to the moon to, de to deliver the sins that he had consumed, hoping against hope that this would be enough to herald in the moonlit rebirth. The four of you, still standing atop the cathedral, lobbed a final attack in desperation, and with one final blast of the voodoo gun, the beast's bloated form was ruptured, and all of the sin exploded out of him in horrific death throes. The demonic gargoyle fell out of the sky and crashed down upon the fountain in the town square as the dark transformation reversed, and all that was left was a withered corpse of Archbishop Danton Alexander Renault, crumbled and broken with a burst belly. That is where our last session ended, and it is here that the next chapter begins. Just give it up for that arc. Holy shit, what a, that, 19 episodes? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's I really some, forgot how incredible that was. That's some tight storytelling. Well, Holy yeah. shit. A lot Holy of fucking shit, shit happened in 19 sessions. <laughs> yeah, we really... Also, God. Skinny Dudley was there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's what I want to say, uh, Nikki. I really appreciate uh, all of you, you. You you gave the recap in a way that very specifically didn't remind everybody how every single event was the pro the problem of us fucking up. Get <laughs> 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 your is, read between the lines. Edge of Midnight is essentially the campaign of how the party makes every wrong decision after wrong uh, decision, yeah. and you you expertly uh, didn't. The, so, you know, tell that, us. so you're agreeing that. Van Brunt did nothing wrong. Whoa, he never said that. He <laughs> uh, never said that. You're putting words in his mouth. Okay, just okay. chill. Okay, okay. just chill. Okay. okay. We ready to continue? Yes. Yep. yep. Holy shit. Brutal fight. It. Anya just betrayed us. We, we haven't yet processed that. Okay, yep. There should be sound. You stare down at the bloated corpse of the Archbishop and you watch the mayhem of Cyril unfold before you. And yet, all you can hear is the ringing in your ears. The ringing of the now broken bell. The ringing of your head from the ever-increasing anxiety and despair. The quick pounding of blood rushing through your veins. You can feel the pounding and the ringing and the pain as you watch the horror unfold. Time feels like molasses pulling you to a near standstill on the edge of the highest tower, and all you can do is watch. And then, in an instant, you are pulled back into this moment, and you are overwhelmed by the noise, the beating of your heart and the ringing in your head overpowered by the screams and wailing from below. But even those noises are drowned out by the silence of near death. Jericho and Lethica lay at your feet, silent, deeply, unsettlingly silent. Neither body is moving or breathing, and all you can do is watch. Uh, got him. Are you alright? No. Uh, more importantly, Farron, to Jericho. Quickly! I'll I'll lean down and place a hand on him and see what I can feel. Uh, I need everyone to close your eyes. We are going to use Icebound's death saving throw rules for this purpose, as Jericho has two failed saves. So I'm going to have you all shut your eyes. Uh, and Mikey, if you could roll a death saving throw for me, please. Here we 
go. Thank you. You may all open your eyes. I've never done that before. That's fun. <laughs> uh, after giving the directive to Farron to check on him, uh, you will see the Marius. I, I begin to undo my gauntlets and, and try to get my bare hands out of my gauntlets. You do that. As you all rush towards Jericho, his body has never really been one that gave the impression of life. He is a scarecrow after all. He's not flesh and bone. He has no beating heart or blood in his veins or breath in his lungs. Yet he lives all the same. And though those functions have never worked on him, you've always sensed life. You've always felt the life that was within him. And as you rush to your friend, you don't sense life any longer. He feels empty and hollow. He feels like any old scarecrow would in a pumpkin patch or a wheat field or a cornfield. And as you lift him up, he feels lighter, almost as if life or the soul could weigh something. And if it did, there's nothing here. Well, I don't feel anything. What, what do you mean? I, I don't feel anything from him. Can you try and heal him? Certainly something of your magics must be able to do something. I don't think there's anything to heal. Jericho. Jericho! Jericho, everything has gone black. And for the first time in your approximation of a life, everything has gone quiet. The voice in your head is silent. You don't even know how to handle having thoughts unimpeded. You relish in the peace of the void for a moment and gather your bearings. You stand alone in darkness. Oh gosh. Weren't we just fighting on top of a big old bell tower against a spooky demon gargoyle? What was once the Archbishop after being betrayed by your little orphan Anya? That was Mother Midnight in disguise the whole time? Gosh, I'm sure I bet your goodness feeling mighty cross about that. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Marius? Briggsy? Miss Fair and Miss Lethica? Your voice echoes around you as if you're in a room with metal walls. Oh, in your room! <laughs> I already mentioned you! <laughs> and suddenly you see a small orange light that moves in the darkness. Oh, fuck. Oh. Then you hear the tap of a cane on metal, followed by the slow, offbeat sound of staggered footsteps as the light gets closer. You realize that this light is an eye. A bright, glowing orange eye with a black pupil shaped like a four-pointed star, but in the head of a silhouette of a man, not a crow. The eye looks at you briefly before looking beyond you as the shadow passes. You turn to watch him pass and realize you cannot move. As he steps behind you, you hear the loud screeching of what sounds like a rusty metal door on a hinge. <coughs> After a few more offbeat steps and cane taps, you hear a cacophonous crash of the door slamming behind you, and you're left alone in the darkness. You all watch as Jericho's body jolts and shakes. His mouth opens and he coughs, <coughs> not air, but black feathers. <coughs> oh my God! What's happening? not something that any of us will be able to comprehend. Whatever thing resides within him is doing something. Could it be what happened to him in the mines? You all, you all right, Jerry? Am I conscious? Mm -hmm. Well, you're becoming conscious. Yeah. I'll sit up. Jericho, can you speak to us, please?
lucidity. I'm sorry, what? No, that's, that's Lefica. My thought. Did you hit your head, boy? Why do you sound like that? I feasted. Well. Well, hold on. It seems you lost your accent, or maybe dialect, I guess you could say. He's not Jericho. Oh, good point. Who are you? You know who I am, boy. What did you do with our friend? He is safe. If I am safe, he is safe. Fear not for him. Um, uh... I mean, I take you, a few steps back. <laughs> you're sort of the same guy, though. I mean, is it like is it the the? Is he still scarecrow? He looks exactly like Jericho. This is weird. That voice coming out of that. I feel like I should get you a top hat or something. As I realize that something is wrong, uh, I, I will have dropped my gauntlets where they are on the floor, and I take several steps back to stand over and over Lethica between her and whatever is happening you, to Jericho. You take the, uh, a protective stance in front of Lethica, almost guarding her body from your friend. This will take getting used to. Clarity of thought. Need a hand there, Jerry? Yes, thank you. I'll pull him up. I'll walk over and look at the hat and I'll pick it up. That'll place it on my head. <clears throat> this is unexpected. Is Thank it, you. Um, I mean, you know, should we fill you in on what happened? You missed a little bit of, you know, a few things. I stopped him, don't worry about that. If you look down there, shot him out of the sky. There's no trouble or nothing, but... Then that is why I am here. I mean, you've been here the whole time. I, I don't really understand. No, you don't, you don't understand. You are a stupid man. The feast, the power, the sin. Does he mean me or Jericho? The Archbishop, his body. You mustn't let the townsfolk take it. It can be consumed. What the fuck? Marys, what do we do? I don't know. I think you're right, maybe this isn't Jericho. It's definitely not. And if I wasn't worried for where Jericho might be, Yorgrim and I would tear this body limb from limb. Who are you? Speak your name. You know my name. Virgil. Once, yes. What is my name? Um, do we know his name? So you say your name was Virgil. I don't want to be on this side of the table. <laughs> oh look, are you, am I in your arms? <laughs> no, I am bad. I am crazy, crazy. Oh, oh, no, 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 creepy, no. clicking uh, ass. Is, so, like, is, the, is Virgil the crow gone? And you do not see the crow anywhere. We know, we know the, the truth. Yes, yeah. you, yes. <sighs> there, there is a power in names. You're foolish if you think that we'll just say yours. Then, you do not know my name if you cannot say it. 
Well, no, isn't it? Isn't it the whole thing that, like, if you say the name, you have power over it, right? So maybe you should say the name. I'm starting to think. That is correct. You will gain power over me if you say my name. Your friend seems to be in distress. Do you not care for her safety? Are you that concerned for farm equipment? Keep an eye on him! Don't! Right. Don't move! You! And then as soon as I feel like Briggsy and Yorgrim and Farron are keeping an eye on him, I'm gonna very like, I'm gonna turn my back to him. And with my ungloved gauntlets, my ungloved hands, I'm going to uh, lean down on one knee, kind of scoop Lethica up into my arms, and uh, pray. Lord of Morning, please bring her back to us. And I'm going to use Lay on Hands, okay. and I'm going to attempt to heal Lethica. Um, use Lay on Hands. How much does it heal for? Um, give, give 50 hit points. I use, I use half my pool. <clears throat> It sounds weird in the context. <laughs> so I, so I said. <laughs> How much? 15 hit points. You feel very quickly the rise and fall of her chest. You feel her in your arms, that there is life in her, but she does not come to consciousness. It almost, you listen, and it almost sounds like she's struggling to breathe behind the mask. Fuck. Um, knowing, knowing what I know, we all know about Lethica, I would attempt to see if I could adjust the mask without removing it all the way to see if there's anything obstructing her airways. You attempt to do that. You move it, you move it a little bit to the side. You try. Um, the mask isn't held on with string or rope or chain. And as you detach even a little bit of it, it pulls from her face completely. Marius, as you look down at Lethica's face, something you haven't seen unmasked but for maybe a side glance, you're taken aback by just how beautiful she is. And despite having fallen in battle, she looks so peaceful. And then she stirs, her chest rising and falling slowly, softly, feeling your presence so close to her, her eyelashes flutter slightly and her eyes open. You are immediately entranced by the color of her eyes. You're a beautiful sunset red. When you see those red eyes and such a pretty face, you feel a sudden pit of dread in your stomach and you begin to lose the present. In a flash, you're propelled back in time, nearly a century in time, as you feel yourself staring deep into beautiful red eyes, blood red eyes. You smell her perfume, roses. You feel her touch, hot. Suddenly, your back and your eyes are bleeding and your fangs have doubled in length. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. <laughs> Just wisdom, you say? Mm -hmm. Just wisdom, you say? Oh, I'm pretty good at that. But a disadvantage, it's gonna be, uh, 18. Dread. Uh, yeah, I figured. I'll use two, it'll be a disadvantage. Sure. Oh, yeah, you got me. 14. Oh, yeah, I definitely got you. <laughs> Time ceases to exist. And before you realize what's happened, you feel more full sated and alive than you have in decades, as every fiber of your soul relishes in the banquet you've indulged in. Your lips grace Lethica's neck, your fangs piercing into her flesh. Her body is your feast. Yet now, your will is your own once more. You come to, holding Lethica's body in your hands, her blood dripping down your chin and you realize what you've done in that moment. This is not the Duchess of Sin. This is not that moment a thousand years ago. This is, this is Lethica. And she, she's wounded by you. Oh, 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 uh, did we no. see him do that? 
you're all watching Jericho. Uh, I would, I would, uh, <laughs> realizing what has happened, almost, oh, no. almost oh, too, God. too quickly. I, I, I'll, I will drop her, and and fall back off of one knee onto my backside, and grip my face and and begin to to push away all four <clears throat> feet hands as I'm backing away. No, 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 if, no, 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 no. What have I done? What have I done? Let it go. No. Uh, I need you to, I need you to roll a d20 for me, please. If I had seen that, if they're facing me and I'm facing toward that, you, I would have... You were the only I person would, who would have seen it. I would have just watched and you would have seen a, a my mouth curl up and I would have gone... <laughs> in, in the most fitting roll of the evening, I rolled a 13. Oh! oh. Okay. Oh. 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 What is happening right now? <laughs> I don't know, but I don't like it. Oh my god. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. Uh, you may continue. I will let you know when uh, it comes into effect. How'd you go, McNamp? Is she all right? Marius, what's happening? I don't know. I, I tried to heal her, and her, her mask was removed, and all of a sudden I was back with the Duchess. The Duchess said. Oh my god, what did you do? Marius! I'm gonna, I guess if I see it, I'm gonna take the gun off of. Virgil, and I'll just sort of run up and and no. check, check on Lethica. Keep keeping me away from you, her. You take the you take the voodoo gun off of off of no, Virgil, my sash. and you rush towards Lethica. You pull her into her, into your arms, and um, well, you do it in the middle. I'm just following as I can possibly yeah. be. <laughs> you grab her to check on her. And she is, she is awake enough that she mutters to you, um, "Sleep, I need sleep." And you watch as her eyes flutter closed, and she dreams off into a peaceful unconsciousness. Farron, you might want to take a look at this. Keep an eye on him, and I'll rush over and lean down to her and just kind of investigate and see what kind of condition she's in. Uh, as roll she a medicine check and an arcana check. For me. I would run over to Marius and pick him up from the front of his plate armor. What have you done? No, 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 no. I, I don't know. I don't know. Keep, keep me away from everyone. What have I done? What have I done? What have I done? And I'm the one you're worried about. Uh. I got a 14 medicine and a five arcana. Okay. Uh, medicine check. You, you can tell that um, that Marius's uh, his magics, his healing magics, have taken effect, and she is not on the brink of death. She has life within her body, but she, there is something that is preventing her from fully reaching consciousness, and whether that is the bite that was administered to her, or something that happened before, or the protection of her goddess. It is hard to know, but there is something keeping Lethica from waking. There's, there's, there's something preventing her from, from breathing. I, I tried to I tried to move her mask to, to see if there was something was dropping her away. I, and then I saw her eyes. What have I done? What have I done? And you gave in to your curse? I wasn't I wasn't here anymore. It was it was almost a hundred years ago. It was that <laughs> night. I don't know what happened. We should get them off this roof. It's possible the bell is driving them crazy. The bell is broken. There is no more sound. Look, we've been through a lot, all right? You know, it may was just an accident, all right? I mean, you know, it's not like you chose to get cursed this way, and maybe this is just a, a temporary symptom based on stress or everything else that we've had to deal with. This is no accident. I am what I am. Are you fucking around and that they can consume the body? What the fuck were you talking about? Um, while they were distracted. Mm -hmm. They were definitely yeah, distracted. Yeah, we're distracted. This is yeah. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he, he swan dives uh, off the, the tower. Oh my god. He crew dives. You ever be okay? Um, I will try to stealthily, uh, <laughs> make my way basically away from the party and try to basically creep my way towards an exit that I per perceive. 
Uh, roll a stealth check, and then everyone check with your uh, perception scores. And oh, no. meter passive beat. perception, right? Passive. Are we doing act- oh, no, it would be passive perception because you were all Distracted. busy doing oh, something. God, mine's so awful. You I don't, there's no fucking way. You probably, someone's going to notice me. Ain't going to be, it ain't me. Oh, I'm a bard, it though. It ain't me. I ain't no fortunate oh. one. <laughs> stealth, you say? Mm-hmm. Fifteen. I don't, I don't see it. Not, per, not passively, no. I have 18. a fifteen. Oh, oh. oh, yeah, that Farron. Yeah, Farron no. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't you, think I'd notice. You, you are... Doing? are I mean, I'm just you are doing your best uh, to tend to Lethica in this moment. You are utilizing your druidic magics to, um, to clot the wounds on her neck that Marius had left. And I'm applying you, some disgusting smelling mud. Yeah, it's it's fetid. <laughs> it's awful. No, it's, no. it's a poultice and poultice. And, uh, I like that. <laughs> and uh, you you were able to do that. I will say you even reach down and grab her mask and fix it firmly to her face. Um, almost like a magnet, it adheres to her okay. uh, magically. I'm um, picturing it like the mask with Jim Carrey mm-hmm. where it like sloops onto his yeah. face when it gets too close. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's magnetized. <laughs> and... Um, you are you are doing you are slowly uh, rubbing the poultice onto the wounds as you hear the crunch of bits of broken stone beneath the feet, the metal f- and straw feet of a scarecrow, and you don't have to look to know that Jericho or Virgil or the other name you dare not speak. They're attempting to move deeper into the shadows away from everyone. Should have used an oil can, bitch! (laughs) (laughs) This body! (laughs) We told you not to move. I won't look at him, but I'll I'll say say what I said. (laughs) I'm gonna take another step back. Marius, do you have control of yourself? Yes, stop him! Do not allow him to leave! Don't move! You don't want to hurt your friend, do you? I don't have to hurt you to stop you. We'll see about that. I run. Uh, <laughs> I bolt, but I'll admit that like, right, I, I'm, I'm, I'm basically hobbling with like a, a, a an off gate and trying to run, and it's very awkward for me. So I'm not. I'm, I would say I'm not sprinting, but I'm basically going about. Uh, it's, it's very clear that whatever is controlling Jericho's body. Um, is not used to moving in this way. <laughs> He's stumbling. I, right? I run as fast as I can with an 800 pound tombstone strap in my back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do a, an athletics contest or uh, athletics acrobatics contest to oh, see who uh, <laughs> who succeeds here. Oh, oh come on! Eight. Eight. Oh, you got you it. You on it? You got an eight total? Yeah. Oh, okay, I got a 16. We're good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> he rolled what? an eight. Rolled I eight. rolled an eight. I thought you rolled an eight. I was like, oh, God, his life scarecrow body. Uh, I, w- I would chase after him as I see him start to move away. Once I, I'm confident that Marius is in control of his faculties, and I will lunge at him and try and tackle him <laughs> as... Uh, like, like, knock him to the ground, but try and shift my body weight so that I'll hit the ground first, and he kind of like collapses against my body. So, in in the event that He'll you know, crush yeah, him. I don't, don't want to shatter all of his twigs straw. and bits, and you know, <laughs> yeah, and you, straw. And. You have utilized this strength for as long as you can remember, and though you are large and you are strong and you take up a lot of space, you are not ungraceful, and you are able to rein in the strength that that you have at your fingertips, and so you are able to grab onto Jericho as you chase him down, uh, and you are able to pull him up off of the ground and hold him to you in a way that he is unable to move. I don't know how he gets anything done in this body. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's very easy to catch him normally. (laughs) You've kept that going. As I hold him, uh, do I feel the key that he wears? Yeah. Hmm. He's got everything on his person. Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. All right, so my head will just completely turn around. Oh, there we go. 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 Oh, 
as my head turns, there's the glow of uh, of Jericho's eyes, and for a moment, uh, two orange uh, like demonic eyeballs will rise up into the eye sockets with the four pointed star pupils, and I'll say, <laughs> "Nope." <laughs> How long do you think you can hold me? As long as I have to. All right, we we gotta start getting some fucking aces from you. All right. If you're Virgil, this is turn back. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, oh sorry. My tongue falls out. And then the eyes will go back down. Um, what the fuck is going on? Where's Jericho? What do you know about whatever the fuck just happened? About the corpse that's in the fucking fountain down there? You better start talking. Jericho. Oh. It is darkness around you. You hear the creak and groan of metal. It gets louder and louder around you, but you are surrounded by darkness. You call out all kinds of things. Virgil, you're coming back for me, right? Can you bring some sarsaparilla? I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a getting a, I'm a bit of fear to the dark. <laughs> you call out for your friends and Virgil, and no one answers back. But as you listen, and as you continue to walk, you eventually find in the darkness that your hands are pressing up against metal. And as you feel it's metal abyss, metal abyss, and it almost feels as if you're in some sort of cage. It's hard to know because it's nothing but pure darkness. And then you hear it very faintly. What's that? Was that your crib? Your crib. Briggsy? Captain Briggsy. <laughs> it's hard to tell what they're saying, but it's almost as if somewhere far off in the distance, muffled too. under a cloud of mist or fog. And the rest! Are friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, just the one. <laughs> Hello? Virgil, help! I, I I understand that this is a bit of uh, poetic irony, uh, but I, I I'm get, I'm awfully afraid of the dark, and I'm starting to, to 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 get a little lonesome and a little afraid. If anyone wants to, to to find me, I'm here. Jericho is here. Old Jericho stinks. Jer oh. uh, but you can call me Jericho, cause most folks do. do, do. <laughs> You're back on top of the bell tower. We have to get ourselves together and get out of here and assess the situation down in the square. Ah. We can't walk around holding this this demon. If he's here, is it possible that Jericho is locked away? Do you think the... Jorgrim, roll a perception check for me, please. I'll, I'll look. Well, I'll, my head will turn back from Briggsy <laughs> to, to Jorgrim, and I'll say, you're very lucky that I cannot play the banjo and I refuse to sing. <laughs> ah, nothing. Nothing. You got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing. Left. Seems I got you got a zero. You can twist it. Nothing you can twist it. Uh, twist. twist. We're getting twist. Actually, it's pretty. No, it's, it's really not. Yeah, it's a guy even worse. Really it got even no, worse. He's doing another. Did you pull out another one? No, I pulled out the first oh, one. Oh, the first yeah. one. So what did you get? We could twist again. All right, I'll twist again. One more. Right. One more, one more. You didn't even tell me what you got. Oh, okay, okay, 18, 18, 18. That's not enough. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, we're not one! I'm just kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> it wouldn't be Edge of Midnight if I didn't say it wasn't enough on a high roll. Um, you, you listen as the creak of Jericho's neck, Virgil's neck, Rome's neck spins <laughs> towards you, and it sounds like yelling. And then you realize that's not the sound of that neck joint. That was that squeaky metal on metal grinding sound, but somewhere far off in the distance, almost as if it's muffled by fog or mist, sounds for a second like you heard someone call your name. Huh? Almost like you heard Jericho call your name. 
I'm in a metal cage of emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly fear. <laughs> which is the more irony on account of being a scarecrow and all. <laughs> more poetic irony, virtual. I get it. I get it. I've learned my lesson. <clears throat> Jericho, is that... I may have heard him. He, he might be trapped within. Oh, that would be so terrible. <sighs> If you think that you can hear him somewhere deep down in there, then Jericho can win this. Jericho can come back. What if we use the key? What if we unlock the cage? Summon the demon before? I don't like the sound of that. No, I mean, the d demon last time was way scarier than what the fuck this guy is. Uh, this guy has a pleasant accent. Biggs he's right. Uh, For some reason, it was a miscalculation and we were to unleash what we saw last time, none of us would be able to handle it. He's right. It's up to Jericho then, to free himself. Do you uh, think? I'm gonna keep looking. Marius, uh, I'm gonna keep looking. you are overcome by a splitting headache. <gasps> Absolutely racked with pain. Ah. All you can smell is iron smell of blood spilt. You can hear the blood pumping through the veins of your friends standing around you. Just that little, that little taste of human blood, that was, or of humanoid blood, was enough to invigorate you. And it was enough to feed into your vampiric tendencies, but it wasn't truly enough. And like a lightning crack, the headache feels like it's splitting your head in two. And you know that the only thing that will fix it is more blood. God. Um, <laughs> as we're having this conversation, I will I will immediately, my hand will immediately go to my head and I, I will wince in pain and uh, uh, suck te uh, my, uh, my, my teeth for a moment as I take, immediately take more steps backwards from the group. You um, attempt to recoil your fangs. This is something you've done before to hide them. Um, they are smaller than a full-fledged vampire fangs would be, but you attempt to hide them and they feel like they're getting longer. As you feel them, they are definitely longer. Longer than the last, longer than you remember them ever being and you cannot seem to hide them. Friends, I, I have a confession. I, I'm not doing well. Things, things are, are, are spiraling out of my control, and, and I fear that it was my minor lapse in judgment that is putting me here. What uh, do you mean you're not doing well? The, Try to fucking describe that. Uh, Leth Lethica's... <laughs> Lethica's blood. The little taste that I got is, is spiraling me, and I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to regain my composure, but I'm, I'm not winning. I'm, I'm going to take a few steps back, and I would advise everyone just keep the distance, please. <clears throat> Meaning you feel like you need some more? I. I'll take a I stance do. over Lethica and try to guard her body. Oh, I do. I want more. Marius, you have to fight it. You're a proud warrior. You can overcome this. Uh, you, you feel nauseous. Uh, you feel clammy. You feel both hot and cold at the same time. Hungry, thirsty, angry, guilty, disappointed. All right, look, maybe maybe we just, well, I guess we're in the fresh air. I think we need to get away from, uh, we, we should probably leave, go downstairs, get out of this bell tower, and um, I mean, you seem to say that, you know, uh, something about, you know, the, the, the Archbishop. You don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, do you? The Archbishop, Denton Alexander Renault. So you do? Uh, so have you been, like, perceiving everything that's going on? You always ignore the bird in the room. Oh, the bird, that's right. <laughs> I guess I kind of forget about the bird sometimes. Your thoughts are... muddied. This is the only clarity I've had in so long. 
eventually. <laughs> I'm talking, okay, so what's going to happen with that guy down there? Can we, you know, are we, you saying we shouldn't just leave him down there? Let us not let his flesh go to waste. He wants to feast on him. I can help him regain some form of power. I, I have a suggestion. I don't want to be near any of you. But I can't... Uh, I can't feed on Jericho's body. Let me hold the demon. Contain him. It will keep my eyes, keep my mind focused on the task at hand. Prevent these cravings. And you can keep Nathika and Farron and Yorgrim and everyone far from me. Roll a constitution saving throw at disadvantage. <laughs> Yikes. Look, if you're just saying it's like a craving, Maybe we just need to get through the habit. If you just, like, I don't mind off, you know, volunteering me. You know, it's just a bunch of gray sludge. I, I don't think it's going to do the same thing. I rolled double 17s. Oh! Uh, with a plus 7 would be a 25. By Lathandra's might! You are dreaded. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> uh, ha! 17. Total. Okay, cool. Oh. Right. 17's enough. I was like, I almost didn't. I'm like, you know what? I'll dread it for just one more round. No, that was good. You, uh, you say this, uh, and you feel, you feel your teeth retract a little. Your stomach turns. You still feel nauseous. The pounding in your head is still present, but it begins to ease. Your body, the way that it regenerates more quickly than. Um, your average person seems to be filtering through Lethica's blood quite quickly. You ha didn't have enough, and the that thirst and that hunger begins to ebb much more quickly than you expected it to. Though you can still smell iron all around you, and you can still hear the way the blood pumps through the veins. You look to Farron, and it's almost as if you can see a roadmap of veins on her body but you feel that you have regained some of your control. Uh, anybody in the room would see my mouth kind of moving a little bit and they would recognize it as me like saying a prayer to the morning mm -hmm. Lord. Uh, but anyone close enough would actually hear me pleading and begging to my God for help. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, is, it, is, it is a craving, but it's unlike anything I've ever experienced before. I, I think I'm all right, please just, Give me Jericho's body. I will watch him. The task will help keep my mind on things. And you all can focus on yourselves and each other and keep Lethica away from me. I believe you, Marius. I will make sure that I have two hands on Jericho's body before Jorgen lets go, as I then rest him with my supernatural strength. I would say with the combined <clears throat> strength between the two of you, it... I won't, even if Jericho were to attempt to escape from the two of you, he wouldn't be able to in that situation. Okay. I, I still, so, I'm like, ah, ah, you, ah. you wrench him away and you're, you hold him tightly to mm. you. The smell of iron is replaced with the <clears throat> smell of copper and steel and hay and dirt. And this was a good call you not being able to smell that, that scent, it eases the pain. The headache begins to fade even more. <coughs> you feel the hot and cold flashes uh, begin to ebb away. You're sweating, but you've, you have significantly more control than you had before. As I take Jericho's body from your room, I, I, I hold Jericho close to my face and I look whatever this creature is right in the eye and I say, Jericho I know that you are in there we're going to help you How did her secrets taste boy? I say nothing and I just continue to stare at him and, and, and hold him Jericho Come and knock on our door. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for you. Uh, in prison, Jericho is best Jericho. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Oh.
That's another poor quadrillion years. I don't even know what a quadrillion is. <laughs> Sorry. Roll a, no, you're great. Roll a perception check. Oh, finally a decent roll. <laughs> Um, perception, I gotta open up my Chrome browser. Uh, perception, you got you saying. Oh yes. man, 23. Whoa. You very clearly hear Marius as he, uh, as he says these words, as he, as he asks for his friend back, as he, you, you are listening now and you realize that you are in a cage. You are not where you should be. Sir Marius? It's me! Your old friend Virgil, remember? We had a drink on the train once! Your name's Jericho. What? Oh! <laughs> uh oh. He's slipping. <laughs> We're losing him. He's My name is o Old Jericho Sticks! Old Jericho Sticks is my name! Don't forget me! I'm down here! I'm in here! I'll roll a perception check, Marius. Oh, yeah. I would be honored to. My perception is absolutely terrible. I'm looking for my d20s that are all the way over there. And uh, Virgil, can you please roll a wisdom saving throw? God, I'm on fire! I got a 24! Oh, wisdom saving throw? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm rolling hot! Which means I'm, I'm gonna start rolling like absolute dookie soon here. <laughs> the, the worm is gonna turn. Uh, the worm what did you get? I got a 24. You, you are saying this to Virgil, and you hear it, almost clear as day for a second, Jericho calling your name. It sounds close, yet far away all at the same time. It's exactly as <coughs> Jorgrim had described it, almost muffled, but it's there. Where it's coming from, it's hard to tell. Oh, I got a 13. Lovely. You feel... <laughs> Jer uh, you feel Virgil. The that same pull. You don't belong in this body. You were you were allowed into this body for a mere second when the life was leaving. When the life was leaving it. When the the rightful owner had left it vacant. You were allowed to slip in through the back door. But that owner isn't wholly dead. For you keep it alive as it keeps you alive. And it wants its home back, Virgil. All this talk, all these scheming, you're it's losing back. control. It's back. No. <clears throat> Am I actually slipping back? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, no, I'm the voice. No, 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 And suddenly I slip back in and I'm, Jericho! <clears throat> Jericho! I, What's I heard happening? Him. I, heard, happening? I heard him deep in there. He was squeezy! No, no, Sasperilla! Sasperilla! Oh, Sasperilla! Oh, 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 oh. Jericho? Oh, Jericho! Oh, my friend! And instead of holding you, I will release you and embrace you and, like, give you a hug and pull you in. Ooh, that's nice. Jericho, you're all right. Gosh, are we having uh, hugs now? I, Can I, we I, get him? I heard you. I heard you deep inside. I, I he all right? Marius, wait. It could be a trick. No, don't worry. I finished him off. He's dead. Gosh, we got him. What happened? You can feel him, Jericho. You know. You want to believe what they're saying. You wish that what they were saying was true. Wait, you're talking about Virgil, right? I meant I meant the Archbishop. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was confused. Oh, and I, I meant the Archbishop too. Okay, <laughs> I was confused. Never mind. Yeah, no, he's dead. <laughs> oh no, yeah, as he's dead. As far as you're aware. Look right in there. We got him. Oh gosh, that's a grim scene. We have a small problem, though. Something, the other thing inside you, it took over temporarily. Are we slugging? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're still hugging. No, 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 I will have let go, and you're still yeah. holding on to me. So I'm like, I'm like talking into your ear, like uncomfortably close. We have a small problem. The, the demon, it, it, it seemed to take, Jer Jericho, you can let go now. Mm. Cool, okay, okay. Um, that's fine, that's just fine, that's just fine. Uh, Oh, my hat's still on. Well, that about that. 
Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I was just enjoying a nice hug. <laughs> Virgil, the demon. It took over your body. Virgil? Yes. Well, no, he just, you know, he... I, he just was was going to run to grab a smoke or something. He was going to just, you know, he's just... He was speaking through you. Threatening us. I took over you. He had full control. It wasn't you anymore. He seemed like he, like, knew some stuff, and you probably stuff that, you know, six of us don't know. Um, he warned us about doing something about the body, and that it was consumable. Do you know anything about that, Jericho? Well, he's always liking to feast upon stuff. Secrets in the flesh and the soul and all that biz. Wait, is he gone? I oh. look around for the crow. You look around, and at first you see nothing. And then peeking around one of these partially broken pillars, you see the small head of a crow. You all stand at the top of the tower, the cathedral. Jericho has returned to you. Lethica is stable. And there is mayhem down below. The sounds of the screaming, the crying, the panic. People aren't sure of what to do in the city of Cyril. Their guiding light, their beacon of hope is dead in the city square. That's true. And he's not just dead. His body is bloated, and unlike who they had come to know, they are uncertain, unsure, they are scared. As all of you stand around, getting your bearings. I'm still covered in blood. <laughs> oh! Of course, with Miss Lethica. She got did she get wounded by the Archbishop? Well I can't speak to that, but Jericho, I did an unforgivable thing. What? What happened? I harmed her. It's It's been nearly a century, Jericho. And I've never once given in to the cravings that I had for humanoid blood. Gosh. There's something about this, this land. I, I don't know what came over me, and I, I gave in to my baser instincts. And I fed upon her. I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to forgive myself. Well, gosh, I mean, we all do stuff that we regret later that we don't mean to. I'm sure Lethica would forgive you, so you should probably forgive yourself. I forgive you. I don't know. I don't know, Jericho. I just, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand what came over me and why the Morning Lord isn't, isn't helping me more. Well, do you think like the signal or the connection is a little uh, on the fritz, so to speak? Perhaps like, you know, that it's, oh, the mist, it's, it's hard, you're breaking up. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I pray to him. Daily, I think I was able to heal Lethica and, and bring her back from the brink, but I almost sent her right back. Well, she seems to be sleeping peacefully now. She's all right. She needed the rest. But what are we going to do with her? We need to get out there and see what's going on, and we can't just take her around with us. Unless... <laughs> <On this>. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's in this moment that you hear a pained cry deep from within the bowels of the cathedral. A cry, a voice that you're familiar with. Hugo! No. <laughs> <laughs> oh the cathedral begins to shake and rumble and you feel that it is unstable. The archbishop shot from the very uh, catacombs of this place straight up yeah. through to the tower. There are missing portions of stone and wood. The foundation has been shaken to its very core, and you realize you are not standing on solid ground. Hugo is at the very bottom of this thing, and if this collapses, he will not survive. 
We have to get to him quickly. I have I have very little magics left, but I'm willing to use them all that I can to help save him. We can heal him. We have to get down there quickly. All right, somebody get left it, not you. Uh, you're, I'll take you, left, left Okay, thank you. Let's get the fuck out of here, all right? Jeez! And uh, I'll just start, like, <laughs> scuttling down the stairs, Mr. Crab style. I'll <laughs> go quickly as well. We would, I would say we hustle. I shift we left into hustle. the classic nestling spot between my <laughs> tombstone <laughs> and my shoulders. And Where who used to sit? And a single <laughs> tear rolls down Aww. my cheek. <sighs> oh... Gosh, I, I know that we need to save Hugo, but I guess we haven't really talked about Anya. There's no time. Not really being Anya. Don't I said there's name. no time, Jericho. Let's go. Oh, you're right. You're right, there is no time. We can't talk about how Anya was actually... The building is collapsing oh. beneath our feet. <laughs> let's go, let's go. You begin to make haste. You, you feel the foundation itself shifting. You hear the sounds of Hugo crying out. You imagine you are the only people who can hear this. Um, the sounds outside are so loud at this point. The sounds of Cyril in panic <clears throat> that it would drown out any noise that's happen happening here at the cathedral as you rush down. You take the rickety wooden stairs and the spiral staircases. You run down, 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 deeper into the cathedral. You dodge out of the way here and there as you notice um, bits of, of rock and timber fall and break away in certain areas. The overall structure seems to be holding strong for the most part, but there are areas of this place that have been severely damaged by the fight that ensued here and you, um, you catapult yourself down to the very depths of this place until you find yourselves once again walking that familiar path towards the room that the betrayal became evident to you. And this, Yorgrim, is where it becomes difficult for you. You feel that feeling that you felt the first time you stepped into this hallway. It was a sense of empowerment. You were going to save this girl, this precious girl, this child that had become like a daughter to you, that you worried for, that you cared for, that you rescued time and time again from herself more than anyone else. And as you walk towards the entrance of this room, you now see that the dust has not settled. You can see the bits of it that catch the moonlight and drift in the air. You see the bits of rubble um, that are visible from how far away you are from the door. But it's almost as if that isn't the reality because you see the room as it was when you headed toward this doorway to begin with and you feel the way that you'd felt in that moment, that hopefulness that she would be there, that you would rescue her. And as you get closer, you begin to feel the sadness creeping in as reality really does return to you. You see the rubble, you see Hugo pinned beneath a, a large marble, um, <coughs> A large marble pillar that has collapsed down on top of him, obscuring most of his body from you. You can only see bits of one of his hand and part of one of his legs uh, sticking out from, from beneath it. And you hear his yelling and his, and his calling to you, but all you can see is her. The way she looked at you and smiled with that cute daughter-like smile before her grin turned crooked and twisted, and her body shifted into who and what she truly was. The witch that you had been chosen and tasked with killing. The witch that had fooled you. And it hurts. As you walk into this room, you hear once again, You go hurt. You watch as the hand flexes and tries to move a large stone off of its body, but he's too weak. All of the strength that this, that this gargoyle man, this Fomorian had had in his body, he had used to propel himself down from the bell tower where you had just come from when he knew his friends were in danger. You were 
about to die at the hands of the Archbishop when Hugo came to your rescue, threw himself in the line of fire for you. He was already wounded. The man that he loved, who had raised him, who had abused him, had shoved a statue, small statue of his God deep within the Fomorian eye that graced Hugo's forehead. He was already hurt, but he loved you and he fought for you. And now you watch as he struggles beneath piles of rubble and dust and broken pieces of religious effigy. And he calls out to you, his voice becoming quieter, more labored, taking more deep breaths between every call out. He can't hear you. He can't hear the footsteps as you run closer to him, as you call out his name. Your voices are drowned out by the silent sobbing. He feels completely and utterly alone, abandoned yet again by those he thought had loved him. Hugo. And you watch as his hand goes limp. Uh, I would immediately try to find one of any any part of him that you mentioned, maybe his hand or a foot, and uh, rush to his side while this is happening. And um, recalling the conversation I had with Jericho, just thinking, please, like to them, please, Morning Lord, one last, one more time, help me. Uh, remain using the remaining fifteen hit points in my lay on hands pool and casting Cure Wounds with my last spell slot at level one. You attempt to do this, but you feel no light of the morning. You feel no sun in the darkness of night. What the fuck? It's only the moon that shines on this land. But you smell the scent of roses. You feel the warmth Get away from him. (laughs) You feel a similar warmth of love and affection. Your God does not answer your call, but it seems that someone else has. You feel a surge of heat rush through your blood. And you know you're not a vampire. Your blood does not have, or did not have, healing properties. But could it? Could drinking could allowing your blood to heal something else is that a possibility the regenerative powers that you have within yourself could you use that instead the morning lord isn't hear, hearing your call the choice is up to you uh, okay so having attempted to lay on hands and not getting any sort of a response uh, I I I think marriage would instantly be shooketh. <laughs> uh, and if and then, you know, hearing what you're saying and smelling the perfume and, and feeling the embrace and getting this innate feeling, uh, marriage would take a few steps back. And having this innate feeling, uh, reach for a small dagger at his side and just prick the tip of his finger to see if I could draw some blood. And it, perha- it comes easy. The and then blood. try using this innate feeling, see if there's a way for me to maybe just see if I can give Hugo a little and, and see what happens. In this moment, the only thing you can see is Hugo's hand and a small part of maybe his calf. You prick your finger. Everyone watches as you do this. This is, this is different. This is strange. And you watch as it bubble almost bubbles up out of your finger as if your your veins are working overtime and it spills out and it drips down your finger and into your palm where it pulls and you watch as it forms the shape of a beautiful red rose before you smear your hands together and you place them down on top of Hugo's body and you're going to attempt to cast a spell again yeah i would i would attempt to do the exact same thing uh, I would I would lay my hands on Hugo, uh, calling forth whatever healing power I feel like I would have left, and whatever you know. And if I still have my last spell slot, to also attempt to cure his wounds, 
uh, tapping into whatever this innate feeling within me is. Because I want to save Hugo. You, you do this and you feel warmth. It pulses and surges through you. You feel the wound not closing like you'd expected it to. And instead, continuing to spill forth your lifeblood, your very essence, trickling down your finger into your palm and spreading out over his gigantic exposed hand. And you feel light, not sunlight, not the light of the morning, but a deep red vibrant light as it pulses all around you. You're almost surrounded in an aura of red light. All of you smell roses. It smells beautiful. It's like a seductive perfume. You feel almost a sense of lust for just a moment. And then you watch as Hugo's hand uh, clamps around yours and it tightens. It's not strength. It's not at full strength. It's very, very weak. As Hugo holds onto your hand. (gasps) Hugo, not alone. No, no, we we are here. It's Marius. Marius is here. Friend, save Hugo. Yes, we're all here. We're all here for you. Yes, Yes, Garsh, we're here. We're all your best chums. Hugo, love friends. Yeah, yeah, we're friends. You better get the fuck up. We should really get the fuck out of here. I don't know how long this tower's going to last. Didn't, didn't, I think there's more rubble that just fell on you, Hugo. Are you, Hugo can you get up? Scared. We've got to help him. He's not going to be able to get up on his own. And it's very clear that he cannot get up on his own. It is also very clear that what Jericho says is true. This is the weakest part of the cathedral, and you have been here for far longer than you would hope would have hoped to and there are bits and pieces of the ceiling that are falling around and crashing down on top of them, and every piece of block of stone, of pillar, um, with every one that falls on top of him, you hear a loud, guttural cry and moan of pain um, as he's being pelted by these items, and you feel that you have very little time to rescue him and get out of this place with your lives intact. Gosh! If it's any All consolation, 22 points of healing. Thank you. We've got to go. We've got to help him now. Stop All of digging. You. Please, dig. And I will just attempt to use my awesome paladin strength to start heaving stones and pieces of rubble. You do? <laughs> I'll take my sickly 90-pound body. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take my sickly wooden and metal arm. <laughs> We'll, we'll share, like, a 15-pound rock. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Farron! Oh, good job! You're real strong, Farron! Oh, okay. uh, I would like you all to roll a group strength check. Please. Here's another one! Oh. You are doing what? I would not be helping. <gasps> what? Uh, what I would be at... I, I would not have even noticed any of this going on. I don't know that I would have seen Marius in his red light or heard what he said, or even uh, notice Hugo at all. I, I am standing in the center of this room. Lethica on my shoulders. But it doesn't feel like Lethica to me. I, I feel the pressure that's so familiar. Uh, and I can almost feel the, the little feet pounding against my chest as I think about Anya uh, and where she used to sit when she would come along with us on these adventures. I think about how when we thought that she had to defend herself, Farron gave her a knife and she took a spear and she looked so cute standing there fully armored. Think about not my best move in hindsight. The way <laughs> she held her book, the way she smelled, the way she laughed, the way that for the first time in a very long time uh, she helped me feel joy. And I see her in this room. I see her lying dead on the floor. I reach out to her, and I see her gnarled hand reaching back out to me, grabbing me by the throat as 
the last time I see Anya is the first time I see Mother Midnight. Her hair, her long, hideous hair would extend out and swirl around me. And as it, as it swirls and tendrils and grips me, it, it turns blue in my memory. And I can see the ghosts of my clan, long gone, take the form of her hair. And I think back to my first, my greatest mistake when I destroyed my own clan, the Shadestone clan. And I can see Nurgle standing at the top of the hill, blasted, destroyed, skeletonized. And I can hear the screams and the death of everyone that I loved, I knew. And this image plays out before you over and over and over again. You don't hear Hugo screams. You don't hear your friends calling for your help. You don't feel them tug on you as they try and pull you back to reality. You watch as this image of the dying girl shifts back to the image of Mother Midnight and then shifts back to the dying girl then back to Mother Midnight all the while. The ghosts of your past surround you and though they say nothing, you feel the guilt. You did this. You did this to us. This is your fault. Is it? Is it my destiny to be the fool for the levelant forces? That seek to destroy everything I have come to love. We can use some help, Yogi! And you'll see all of my, uh, my right hand will be picking it up, and my left hand will be floating off of my wrist <laughs> somewhere else, just chucking rocks, smaller rocks. Yogi! There it is! Please! You all realize very quickly that whatever has uh, entranced Yorgrim is not something that's going to fade right away, and you, you very quickly come to the realization you are going to have to do this without your strongest member. If you want to save Hugo, you're going to have to do this without him. Marius, you know all too well you are definitely not the strongest member of this group. I'm pretty you sure are I have easily 20, 20, 20, 19. one of the more strength. you are one strength. of the more weak members of this group, what? and you feel that. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. Look at him. My muscles are rippling. <laughs> No, but you, you do realize that in this moment you are going to have to do this yourself. And I need the four of you to roll your strength. 21. Uh, as I realize oh, that right, Yorgrim's not helping, may I cast a spell? Of course I you can. I have like one yeah, spell you can, left. You're welcome to use an action. Out. It's not, you know. Um... I'll, pu- I'll pull out my banjo after getting my, my senses back to me after dying, I guess. Um, and I'll pluck a few strings. Uh, Nighttime in Cyril and Hugo awakes. Uh, sing the bells of blinding light and the bells, bells, bells. And I'll just keep going <laughs> as uh, I cast Enlarge Reduce and he doubles in size. Oh, that's amazing. You watch as Hugo doubles in size. He was already strong. He was already gigantic. Uh, Wasn't a 15 foot tall elven guard, but he was pretty large. (laughs) That's pretty big. That's pretty large. But you know, he's half Fomorian, all right? It was pretty large. Uh, Or no, he's full Fomorian. Uh, He, um,. And you watch as he gets, as he um, enlarges, and he is up against the wall. He breaks through some of the foundation. The cathedral is significantly less stable than it had been before, but you watch as a significant portion of the rubble falls away from him, enough for you to see the full extent of the damage. Buried deep within his ribcage, head first, is a statue of Foltus. Er, uh, yeah, Foltus, sorry. And um, 
you can see that the blood is bubbling up out of it as he tries to call and to breathe. He doesn't realize the extent of the damage there. As he begins to move, you see that it starts to, um, it starts to shimmy out of place and you can see more blood begin to spill. You know that if that is removed improperly, Hugo will not survive it. I will look at him um, and see the blood and immediately like dive and put my my hands um, where the blood is starting to bubble up. I'll try not to move the statue or anything like that. Um, but you'll start to see like spores coming from my hands and um, patching around where some of this blood has mm-hmm. kind of almost like creating like a, a faux scab, like staunching some of this bleeding. And I'll cast uh, Cure Wounds at, at a third level. Oh, oh damn, man. Um, Saving that one in the boss fight. No, I wish I had some spell shots. <laughs> I could do some cool stuff too. Just saving that. Could for you next do week. that? Well, maybe not that, but I could do something. Hanging on to those week to week. I don't know if I got that from leveling up. That was up. terrible. I did take the ability from leveling up. Thank God. God, that was so bad. It's not not about the number you roll for healing, but about the level of the spell slot. Okay. Um, I rolled fifteen. Okay. And Hugo has advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. You. That's pretty good. You watch as Farron dashes to Hugo and she places her hands, the tips of her fingers blackened and covered in dirt. She places them up against Hugo's wound and you immediately watch as out of the palm of her hands, gnarled vines begin to. Um, uh, begin to unfurl and embed themselves into his skin, into his flesh. He shrieks out in pain for a moment, but you, um, your gentle voice lulls him back into a sense of safety. He trusts you. He believes in you. You are the friend that came to rescue Hugo. And though it is painful, he relaxes as you channel this magic, not just healing, but you watch as the roots do exactly what you knew not to do, remove the statue from his wound, but they do. They force it out and almost like threads of sinew, they begin to, they begin to sew up the wound with these darkened, um, earthy cool. vines. And you watch as the wound is still there. It's still um, red and bruised and aching and sore but it is closed, stitched together with the earth. You've got to get up, Hugo. You've got to be strong and get yourself out of here. We're not gonna leave you. Hugo, move! And he seems very, very weak. He's having a hard time speaking. He's having a hard time talking. Even with the extra strength, um, he wobbles on his feet as he slowly stands. Uh, you can still you can see the um, uh, you still see the wound on his third eye uh, as uh, all of his eyes attempt to blink. You see tears streaming down his face, mixed with blood and dust and um, bits of. Uh, stone and wood, and he he gets to his feet, wobbles a bit, um, steadies himself on your shoulder, um, and looks up towards the sky and realizes that you're going to have to move quickly as you watch as more uh, pieces of the cathedral begin to shake and begin to come down. You go follow friends. You heard him. It's time to move. Well, Jorgrim, you hear none of this. So you stare down at the floor, the shifting and um, movement of Mother Midnight to Anya, Mother Midnight to, to Anya, Mother Midnight to Anya has stopped. And instead, you're staring down at Anya. She looks up at you with her big brown eyes. Her brown hair is messy and disheveled as she sits cross-legged on the floor looking up at you. She smiles. It's almost as if you can look through her. This can't be real, this isn't really her. This is, this is your mind doing all of this, but it's almost like you can hear her voice in your head. Yorgi? 
Are we going to go outside and play a game? It's lonely in here. And it's cold. But her mouth doesn't move. You <coughs> reach down like you're going to pick her up and you see her face shift for a moment. It's the horrendous face of Mother Midnight for just a split second before it's nothing but those beautiful, large brown eyes. And then I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, shit. A disadvantage. <gasps> Okay, all right, okay. <coughs> I didn't see it coming. <laughs> <laughs> How could this happen to me? 15. 15. You, you can forget the shift in her face. That wasn't really mother, this is your little girl, this is Anya, and you reach down to pick her up. Then you hear the noise of stone sliding on stone, and it is that moment of being pulled out of this facade that you realize where you are. You're not in the cathedral before all of this happened. Anya is not who she said she was, and Mother Midnight must die for what she has done. As you realize all too soon that the cathedral is collapsing around you and you are able to dart out of the way for a split second as one of the pillars holding up this place crashes oh to the God. ground and shatters directly in the spot where you had been envisioning <gasps> Anya to be. And you watch as the ghost of this little girl is obliterated and drifts off into nothing but God. rubble and dust. Not again, never again. <sighs> Yorgrim! We're getting out of here, Mr. Yorgrim! We've gotta go. It's all coming down! How's Hugo? Uh... <laughs> he's, he's managing, but we must move quickly. Then let's go! Uh, oh, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> we, we hustle yeah. and we're all helping all right. Hugo. Oh, that's not stained glass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Oh, tabernacle! You, you, you touch the stained glass, it's shattered. Ooh, is that a silver sensor? <laughs> Briggsy, you have magic. Can you use any healing magic on on uh, on, on Hugo? I'm ta I'm tapped out. I'm sorry. What? This is all the magic on my left, and I just like pull out my 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 gun. What about the jawbone of Saint Fultonheimer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a superstition. <laughs> the superstitions group a lot ago. You are having this conversation I'm, I'm so as you are rushing through the cathedral, oh doing God. your best to stay out of the spots that are um, the most ramshackled, the most destroyed. But you see now that so much of this place has already come down, and the foundation itself is no longer stable at all. The cathedral <coughs> will fall. It is only a matter of time as you run through this place. I need you all to roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh, 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 that is. Oh, oh, wait, wait, anybody? I totally forgot. I have an aura of protection, so anybody close to me. I'm very close. Do I get advantage? Plus four on saves. Plus oh, four. Oh, I got a natural one. You get plus four. Should we twist? Or twist. twist that? One twist. What did oh, you, yeah. Did you say at advantage or disadvantage? Oh, yes. What did you say? Just normal. Just normal. Straight. Just normal. Okay. Just normal. Oh yeah, I smashed it. I smashed it this time. Thank you, chat, for the twist. Actually, we should have. We need to keep track of this. We don't have any, right? No, we have. Uh, we would go to none of the mods. Message me. I know, with the count. I have the total. Oh, thank you. And what is your? Thank thing you, have? mods. I got the plus total. four. Plus four. And what would we do without you guys? Ooh, that's that's not bad. <laughs> Ooh, thirty-one. Ooh. What's that? Well, okay. Now Perfect. mine thank seems you. pretty bad. For a deck save. <laughs> um, remember, you get plus four uh, from yeah, my aura. Uh, Oh, so wow. this guy, I got uh, uh, 14. 30, oh. I rolled a natural 20 and I got a 27. Well, you're a strength-based character. That's true. Yeah. He's, he's a dex-based character? Well, bards he's are like active all trades. Bards have, uh, oh, I'm proficient. Bards, 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 I didn't know that bards were proficient with dex. Yeah, oh, dex yeah. and charisma, that's really, yeah. what well, is yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah, 25. Like, jack of all trades. Nice. Yeah. I got a 19. Yeah. Uh, I rolled low. I got oh, 14. I have to roll for, 
uh, hugger. It's not that low. That's pretty good. So I, despite I Virgil me. clunking around and not being able to manipulate Jericho's body, Jericho's like, it's all he's ever known, so he's you're, just like... Wait, you're Mr. Yeah. McGooey. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just love my way. Oh, oh gosh. You're right. That, that is close. Oh, that gosh. is some nice safe stains that was also close. Oh, gosh. Oh. You, Shoes untied. <laughs> you are all able to rush through the um, the hallway that you entered into the cathedral, the catacombs through, and uh, you dodge the stones that are falling, the beams that are holding up the ceiling. You you rush forward and you watch as the entirety of the um, <clears throat> the cavern behind you collapses into rubble as you rush <laughs> forward and you take a quick turn and begin to he- head up a stairwell. I need you to uh, roll another oh. um, dexterity saving throw for the Oh place. boy, remember, plus four. Plus four if you're near me. Whoa! Keep that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so was last time, 25. Oh, much better, much better, 21. 18. I hold my shield up and block some. 30, <laughs> yeah, that's what you're doing well. Good, good God. Mm. Uh, 21 this time, this was the 31. I rolled low. Uh, what, did, what did you get? 14. Um, you are running through <laughs> as bits of the stairway begins to, to um, as we get bits of this stone spiral staircase uh, begin to fall away. Um, it is crumbling from the top down and you are diving this way and that, missing stones by inches, most of you. Farron, however, um, misjudges and takes six points of bludgeoning damage Ooh. as um, she's hit by two individual stones, one right after the other. Uh, it's incredibly painful, but you are able to propel yourself forward as Ooh, all of you um, make your way out of the lower <coughs> floors and onto the main floor of this cathedral. You're now in the church portion proper and you see around you that this place is an absolute devastation. The um, parts of the walls have fallen apart. The stained glass window has blown out. The candelabras have been knocked over and um, the have the curtains and the altar have caught fire. Um, oh, as oh, this no. place is, <laughs> will you stop it? <laughs> I mean, we got, we got him over here. We got him over here stealing everything. We got poor parents like, oh my fucking dear legs. <laughs> my fucking legs. Oh, oh my fucking, fucking dear legs. legs. You have oh. one more stretch of this cathedral. Oh, boy. Um, my fucking legs. You have to get through the cathedral <laughs> proper and out the front doors before you find yourself um, in Cyril and to safety um, <laughs> as you begin to book it and rush through this room filled with smoke, rubble, and debris, and I need you all to make another dexterity saving throw for me, please. Plus four, plus four, uh, plus four, uh, plus four. Potato. Potato. Natural fucking 20. Uh, good job. I, I got crushed. I got an 11. I'm, about to get, I'm ready to meet my maker. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, my fucking vampire legs. <laughs> 22. 16. Me fucking curtains. <laughs> Oh, Come on, Virgil! Really Come on, fly! Fly like the wind! <laughs> you all begin to run as one of the one of the wooden beams crashes from the ceiling aflame. Um, the curtains that had been hanging along that side of the wall um, caught a blaze, traveling or carrying the fire up to the rafters. As one of these pillars crashes down, uh, it pins two of you Ow. beneath its weight, Marius and Jericho. You oh. find yourselves um, smashed and pinned by the weight of this beam, talking. Oh. Morning, Lord, curse it! <laughs> <laughs> 14 points oh, of bludgeoning and fire I, damage. I didn't I, Dungeon mistress. Yeah. I realized I didn't heal. Uh-huh. <laughs> when I came back to life, how many hit points did I get? Just you one. had one hit point? Oh, no! Oh, God! Oh, God! I should have healed myself! Oh, gosh! I'm a cut! Well, hold on. <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> oh, no. I just had my... No, I... I, I had to... <laughs> oh, uh, no, I I just got into my taste of life again. <laughs> <laughs> Demico, Demico, are you? Oh, oh, we've lost him. We've lost oh, him. 
Well, uh, do you have any healing matter? Do you have anything like good berries or anything like that? I'm out of spell slots. I use it so on, you on have Mars nothing. Base. Okay, yeah. I should have because... only use one point on Lethica. <laughs> <laughs> because if you had something like that, I would give you the ability to use that since we didn't have much time afterwards. We did take a break right away, so it would make sense that you would forget to do that mechanically. But if you have uh, nothing, yeah, you die. Once, I, once I see <laughs> yeah, this, you this killer, this killer <laughs> crush my uh, my friends, I would immediately uh, move over to Marius' side of the pillar, and slam this shovel under, uh, and try and like yeah. pin up and and peel it off of them you, as much as possible. Yes, you are filled with a level of rage that you have never <laughs> felt before. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even need to roll for this, as you uh, you though. think about what what you've just experienced and the anger that you feel. What was stolen wow. from you? And you wrench your shovel into uh, in between two of the um, the stones that line the floor of this place, wedging your oh. your shovel there for a second before <laughs> flinging it backwards, and the the beam itself flies up almost effortlessly, slams against the wall, shaking the entire wall. You watch as um, two more candelabras <laughs> fall over, uh, bits of the wall begin to rain down, but you don't care. You'll be out of here in a moment. As you quickly grab Jericho, lift Marius to his feet. Oh, thank you. And with, with Jericho in one hand, Lethica on your back, you turn and you lead the charge. Out of this cathedral. It's like that you... scene from Lame is a Rob. This is the fastest Yorker has ever moved, and he's going 15 feet per second. You, you don't even stop at the door to open it. You charge into it, and with the full force of your body and the tombstone across your back, you the doors fly open in your wake, and all of you spill out onto the steps of the cathedral, into the center of the, the, the town square of Cyril, smoke billowing out of the cathedral behind you. And mere seconds afterwards, with a loud crack and pop, the cathedral levels itself Damn. as stone and wood come crumbling down. The fire roars for but a moment more as it illuminates your silhouette to anyone watching on as all of you make your way out of this cathedral. And then it slowly begins to die and turn to embers, nothing left for the fire to feed on. The cathedral in Cyril is no more. Archbishop Danton Alexander Renault is no more. But you have all managed to survive. Jericho, I need you to make a death saving throw for me, please. Everybody close your eyes. Oh. oh. Wieners. <laughs> Got it. Good? Okay, yep. I've smudged my glasses. <laughs> you are standing here, right off the steps of the cathedral, and all you can hear is the sound of the stones behind you. As everything begins to settle, you look over and you see the bloated, dead body of the archbishop impaled on the fountain. All around you, people are screaming and running and crying. Um, you hear bits of conversation. What? I, I can't believe it. He, he, he was he was our pope. Do you think this is all he's doing? You know I think it was his doing. He was supposed to lead us against sin and look at him flying towards that moon. It is very clear that all of a sudden the people of Cyril are beginning to see the truth for what it was. Mm. As you hear them nervously talking about things, they hide their children's <coughs> eyes from the view of, of, of what's happening here. You hear um, bits of conversation. The cathedral wouldn't have fallen if the gods hadn't forsaken us. If he was an honest and just man, if he was truly religious, the gods would have shown their light on us this day. None of this would have happened. He is at fault. He was the heretic. He was the witch. He was the evil in this city. None of them seem to be paying any attention to you. 
I would like to take the opportunity while this is happening to uh, go in my pack. I, I, as I'm reaching through my my belongings, I turn to Yorgrim and I say, Yorgrim, hold Jericho still, and I will pull out my only potion of greater healing. I will bite the cork off with my teeth, and I will pour the potion into his mouth. I'll and lull say, his head back. Oh, too far, too far. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and I believe that's four d four. Plus four healing, provided he can drink it. Five. Is he go with us? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was, uh, I was waiting for you to be like, uh, all of you get out, except. <laughs> 14 points of healing. Is Perfect. Hugo you take 14 points of healing. And, I, uh, and, and you come to with 14 points it'll of healing. It'll pour into my mouth and it'll be as quiet as you hear. Go! Oh! Keep, keep uh, running! Uh, keep <laughs> running! <laughs> Jump, go, Jump, go. 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 Uh, Breathe. Relax. You're all right. Are we all okay? Out. Is everyone all right? Are you okay? <gasps> oh, gosh. I'm not a runner. <laughs> I don't even have lungs and I'm winded. <laughs> you were, are being carried and you're winded. <laughs> I'm being carried and I'm winded. <laughs> I would look around amongst the commotion of the crowd, talking about the remains, and just take a moment to see if I could find a place, maybe a barrel or something, just to sit down and lean against it. This would all look like hell. <laughs> From here, you know that there are quite a few uh, darkened alleyways that lead <sighs> off deeper into Cyril, and you skirt, um, or you leave the stairs, and you <sighs> skirt past the rubble of the fallen cathedral, and past the first, and then the second, and then into the third darkened alleyway. Nobody seemed to pay much attention to what happened to you. Though you had been right in front of this, the, uh, the visual of the cathedral falling was more than enough to catch their attention. And the last thing they were focused on were people standing in front of the cathedral, no matter, no matter how different they may have been. But as you begin to move through Cyril, you do begin to hear things. Well, what happened to those strange people that he was working with? You know that they were in on it, hunting witches, I do, I do not think. Well, are you trying to say that they are evil? Yes, I'm trying to say that they're evil. All of this started to go wrong when they showed up. Oh, you're right, it did, didn't it? And then there was that night of, we don't talk about that night. Sorry, honey. And you... Why oh, would you think that? <laughs> <laughs> and you do hear bits of this. Um, it's not as much as, um, mm. it's, it's not as cacophonous as the noise of the people pointing the blame at the archbishop, but it is still there, still, the deepest layer of their subconscious. You are strange, you are different, you are monstrous to these people. You are an easy target for blame, and should they get the chance, you would be all too easy to be the scapegoat for what's happened here. And so you hide yourself in the shadows. You feel that in this place, in this moment, you are out of sight, out of mind. And Hugo, by the way, is normal sized because he would have liked Mario. Do you, do you, do you, do you, like, yes. Like he hit a fucking Goomba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's still two people fucking in the alley. <laughs> you not finished? Um, we fixed that like 40 minutes ago. You can stop now. They um, don't. Uh, that's, oh, that's weird. I thought it was a nice Oh, no, I mean, it's just. Just a quick refractory uh, period. Uh, as as soon as we get to like a place, oh no, you caught us. Uh, <laughs> I'll say, well, oh no, please don't keep watching. We did it, friends. We saved the city. <laughs> and then like the lads remaining retain their wall and collapses. All right. Well, we saved all right, let's, let us please just take a moment to regain our composure. Well, 
The city folks seem to be perfectly reasonable. (laughs) 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 And totally understanding of what everything just just happened. I'm not sure that we can stay here in the city. Uh, You think they're going to hunt us down? Oh, it won't be long till they start pointing the finger at us. What do we even have to do here anymore? Everything we came here to accomplish is done. Leave them. Now Just we, run? Wasn't the whole point for us to save Zero? <laughs> because that's what Lord Druskenwald asked us to do? If we show up and say, Oh, hey, Lord Phil, everything, everything's looking up. <laughs> he asked us to save the city from something terrible. Now all that's left is run-of-the-mill assholes and we can just leave. Yeah, <laughs> we did the job from a certain point of view. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true and all, but we also didn't cut the head off the snake, neither. Will you see her around anywhere for us to cut a fucking head off? I don't think so. She's gone. It just means that our work isn't done. We've got more work to do. It's just not here anymore. Correct. We still don't understand what Anya... Mother Midnight was trying to do. What was he doing flying to the moon? What were they they trying to accomplish here? What are those creatures in the amber? Trying to complete whatever the fucking ritual was they were working on, I mean. Those was demons. I think we stopped it now. I mean, (laughs) clearly they're physically capable of not turning into horrible creatures. (laughs) Look over (laughs) there. You can stop now. <laughs> no, seriously, please stop. We're right here. Get out of here! <laughs> We're gonna plan right here. Yeah. Never mind. We're just gonna yeah. keep. Go on! Go on now, get! Skip! Yeah! Skip! Get! <laughs> well, uh, we need to make sure that, uh, that, uh, that the little one. And, uh, Macduff, Matron Macduff, that they're okay. Wasn't, wasn't that, uh, that fellow what beat Yorgrim in that fair fight? Wasn't he gonna round up a posse and do some sort of manner of vigilante justice? Oh, you're right, right, the mastermind of all this. He's still free. <laughs> Mother of Midnight is... <laughs> Quite frankly, I, with everything going on, I had forgotten about Van Brunt. He is still out there, and we need to make sure that he isn't harming innocent people. An posse can be pretty fucking dangerous, too. The what? A posse. It's a group of friends. A posse. You might not be familiar with it. Oh, oh. oh. oh you're right. Oh. <laughs> to end this whole man's career. <laughs> oh, that's right, a posse. I, I love posses. <laughs> I'd always hope to be part of one one day. I, I always hope to be part of one. Oh, there's... Yeah. I don't think we're going to go down that cul-de-sac. I thought you were confused about my... I checked my inventory. Ten pounds of pussy gold rock. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm holding up like rock with gold bits in it, like covered in gross pus. Oh. <laughs> anyway, oh. <laughs> that's right. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've no, I've encountered quite a few posses in my life. Usually pitchforks, torches. Uh, um, h- hi. Oh, you done? <laughs> no, no. We all turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh. you, you shouldn't be out here. Why do you say that? Well, I heard some people talking about the fact that you might be the reason for all this, but I know that's not true. I know that you're just here to help. I've watched you help. Who Who is this, like, speaking? You're looking at what appears to be maybe a 14-year-old girl. Oh. Um, she's wearing a simple blue dress, uh, an off-white apron that's covered in um, it's covered in 
uh, baking, uh, I'll just say paraphernalia, but that sounds weird. <laughs> covered in <laughs> pancake dust? <laughs> no. Flour. Okay. Yeah, covered oh, in flour. Oh, bonjour. And, 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 and bits, of, bits of syrup <laughs> and things. Um, she's clearly been in a kitchen all day. Her um, her hair is a, um, a strawberry blonde, and it's covered in soot. Uh, you see a, a smudge of snot on her nose and on her cheek. Um, but she um, she looks sweet, and you see now um, as you look towards her that the back door to one of the um, one of the bakeries along this uh, along the opposite road is open. She clearly stepped out to um, you see a bin. She was taking out the the rubbish, and you see that um, she noticed you here. People have been talking about you, and I'm afraid if they see you out here right now and. Everything is like this until they've had a chance to calm down. That they'll do something to you. If you have a safe place to go, you should go there. At least for the night. I'm sure everyone will feel better in the morning. We 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 are deeply appreciative of your warning. Yogram, don't speak to her. She'll immediately turn into Mother Midnight. <laughs> I was gonna say. Aww, I was gonna say. So me. <laughs> Uh, young awful. young lady, how do you feel about a, a killer dan- dancing beside a bonfire on the equinox? <laughs> you no, I think what she's saying is let's get the fuck out of here. We gotta find like a you know pirate hideout. Do you know low. a good hideout? I don't. Oh. But if if you know of any place that you think is safe, any place that you would be comfortable. You should go there. Any good what, coves around here? Or like dense jungles? Weren't you staying at the Mirabelle place? We were, yes. That's I correct. I don't think anyone would touch that place. At least not right now with everything that's happened. They'd be too afraid of witches' spells and hexes and things. Well, Maybe it would be safe for you to go back there, there. At least for the night. Perhaps we can find some back alleyways and sneak around and, and perhaps get there unnoticed. What do we think? All right, you lead away. All right. Jericho's in rough shape. We need to rest up for the night. Agreed. That's true. So is Hugo. All right. Gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Do. Uh, we can't sneak around with this big fucker. <laughs> well, he is actually quite stealthy. If you remember, he was actually quite graceful and agile, probably not with the statue and so, uh, in his person. Uh, uh, Miss Lethica will be waking up real soon, Hugo. Don't worry, and she'll she'll help you out. None of us are qualified, <laughs> but she will certainly be able to help you out. You see that Hugo is standing directly behind Yorgrim, and he's uh. looking down with Leth- Lethica with affection and panic on his face. Um, you occasionally hear him muttering things to himself as if he's almost trying to, to talk himself out of things. You listen a little bit now that your attention's drawn to him and you, you hear him, Lethica, okay? Hugo not scared. Lethica alive. Hugo love Lethica. Lethica friend. He is horrified of Lethica's state. I will turn to the group and say, all right, let us make haste. And then I will turn to the, the young girl and uh, maintaining an unusual amount of distance, I'll just look there and say, thank you, and please be safe. You too, uh, do you want a basket of bergamot cupcakes? I've been cooking them all night. No, bergamot's not really our thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you though. Do you say cupcakes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Completely forgetting the, the prior instance, yeah. the prior. <laughs> I touch my gums. I run, I run my tongue along all of they my They have teeth. a lavender frosting. It's something I've been working on for the past month or so. No, I could take one. I slap it immediately <laughs> out of his hands. Oh. We need to go. I worked really hard on uh, that. It's, oh. it, it is, it's nothing personal. Please She reaches me. down and picks it up. It's crumbling now and, and kind of crushed. <coughs> and she tries to wipe it off, but she looks sad. <laughs> All right, well. Virgil swoops down and smashes it like a seagull. <laughs> she tosses it into the rubbish bin. Oh, Virgil's right over there. <laughs> At least someone will get use out of it tonight. Anyway, <clears throat> you should you should get to safety. Thank you. Please don't tell me that's a secret family recipe. Oh no. 
Oh, gosh, no. okay. No, there's no secrets in there, Virgil. Get out of the trash. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to make you more powerful. That's pretty good. Let's yeah. go. No, it's just a recipe my family's had for years. And she turns and walks into the... Uh, those were absolutely full heel muffins, but we're already on our way to the mirror <laughs> bells. <Yeah. laughs> I would have my hand on my shovel and just Try. stare at her until the door closes of the bakery. It does. Let's go. All right. I need you all to roll a stealth check. <gasps> I think I'm okay at that. Whoa! Oh, I Don't did it again. One. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Can I get a twist? I did it again. I did it again. Oh, oh yeah. Plus twist, yeah. Stealth check, just straight up. Natural stealth, 20. Stealth. Oh! Baby. So you Natural like 150. fucking 20. Oh, uh, shit, I'm a disadvantage on stealth for some reason. Uh, let me get one of them twists. Oh, well, look, I just cannot not roll awesome. That's pretty so good. So my lowest was a 10. Okay. So I got an 11 for stealth. After disadvantage. 24. 17. 19. What, what? did you, oh, you got a natural 20. Uh, Many. Hugo. Plus, Hugo, it's Hugo, 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 Oh, Hugo. oh wait. No, it's just a skill check. <laughs> you got a, got a natural 20, so. <gasps> Whoa! Gosh, he's good. He is he's good. Healthy, yeah. I got a 28. Um, Wow. His, oh, his need Incredible. to protect Lethica and to protect his friends causes him to really watch every step that he makes. He knows this city like the back of his hand. He has traveled it since he was a wee lad. And he knows every stone in Cyril. And he guides you quickly and stealthily through the back streets of Cyril, down streets you didn't even realize existed, until you find yourselves spilling out directly in front of the old Mirabelle house. It's quiet, it's empty. Colette is safe with Maggie McDuff, and her parents are no longer with you. So the house is quiet and dark and cold. You look around you and no one seems to be coming down these streets, almost as if they're trying to stay away from them. Does something about this place makes them uncomfortable or nervous? Maybe that little girl was right. Maybe this is the safest pla place to stay the night. Her dad's not still like in there, is he? Francois? No, he had been, he had been removed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, off. Uh, I, I just gently uh, step over. I don't, don't want to freak anybody out. Does anybody eat that? Virgil's <laughs> 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 like Darius. Darius, no. Oh, the blood's long dried. Uh, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, we, I would say that if we are able to stealthily enter the house, we would continue to just kind of quietly, Marius would start to take a look around, survey the area, see what's going on, look at the state that we left it in, make sure there is absolutely like no intruders or anyone hiding here squatting. Um, and uh, Oh, and witch balls. Mm. I would say roll a perception check at advantage. I'll have you roll it for everybody. <laughs> Me? Oh, yeah, well, you're the one who said you wanted Ooh, to do it. I changed my mind. Look over there! Oh, baby, I don't change my mind. 23. I'm on fire! Oh! <laughs> you quickly dart into the house, and you look around, um, and it is quiet. You light a few candles, you case the joint, uh, and you see that this place is clearly empty, uh, aside from the group of you and uh, there's no one hiding in here. There are no witch bowls that can be found. It is just as you had left it. <clears throat> you all usher yourselves in and begin to, um, begin to light some more candles and you maybe get a fire going in the hearth and you begin to make food. All the while, Hugo stands framed in the door, silently weeping. Oh. Hey, Hugo, it's okay. There's nothing, nothing's gonna hurt you in here. This is a safe space. You see that his eyes oh, are yeah. stared directly, are staring directly to a smear of blood on the floor. A smear of blood you remember all too well. The spot where you had found Francois. You see how the blood trails out the door when his body had been removed. Hugo looks down at, at this in what is very clearly shame and guilt. You go bad. You go monster.
No, you're 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 not a monster, Hugo. I mean, to be fair, he did stab you with a sword. And if I had giant arms like that, I think I would have done the same thing. This is a safe place. I know something rough here happened, but Miss Lethica needs this comfy spot to rest up and heal so you can get healed. So just just come on in and we'll close the door and it's going to be okay. I'll play a little jaunty tune for you. What's your favorite tune? Father Renault was right. Hugo worthless. Hugo stupid. Hugo mean. Hugo bad. No, no, look, you're not bad, all right? That's right. You know, if it makes you feel any better, our very own Samarius is sort of did the same kind of thing like 15 minutes ago. You know, he let his kind of darker side take over and, uh, you know, did a little goblin on uh, Lefica. And you let your darker side take over because of past, you know, issues, which you know, isn't your fault, just like his past issues isn't his fault. <laughs> and you punched a guy until he died, you know. This happens to the best of us. Hugo didn't want to. And no one's blaming you, all right? All we don't blame Marius for draining Lefica of half of blood. Marius could. Uh. Marius... Friend. It's a bit more complicated than that, Hugo. Marius may be good sometimes, but we all make mistakes, as Briggsy is trying to say. Hugo make mistake. It's okay. I he, heck, after after playing at a, at a at a place or a small local festival, I've blacked out and woken up covered in blood and gore and viscera and body parts. Hugh- we. Hugo loved Jericho. I well, you know what, Hugo? Well, gosh, Jericho love Hugo. Oh, <laughs> Jericho friend. And he goes Hugo in friend. and he wraps you up into a huge hug, picks you up off the ground. Oh. He doesn't fit in here. He is very hunched over. His back oh, sorry, is pressed up against the wall, but he Forgot. doesn't care. As he looks down at all of you, he uh, wipes the tears and snot across his face with his arm. Here, he looks down at all of you, and then he throws himself onto the ground um, by the fire, picks <laughs> Lethica up, puts her in his lap, and oh, he just gently rocks her by the fire. Yeah, not just too long ago, 15 minutes about, Mary is woke up in <laughs> Lethica's blood. She's trying to get me killed. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't seem... For the sake of this campaign, boom, boom, he does boom. not hear what you're saying right now. He's just jumping it off. He is trying. He doesn't hear what you're saying right now. He is too busy. He's. You hear that he's gently singing a lullaby. Uh, he's gonna dunk and tongue, but he's gonna slam her. Butter, butter, butter. But you Yeah. He grabs you, he throws my you arms off, off, and just up air combos you up the stage. <laughs> 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 I got too much of my donkey cup. He gives you a back air and you just get yeeted off the stage. Uh. And with that, you all find yourselves in a comfortable, cozy house for the night. You can finally rest after this long day. And though it is the land of eternal night, you know that it is well past your bedtime. I'm gonna find a, um, a blanket or a sheet or something and fluff it out and lay it over the blood stain on the floor and then I'll crawl up onto the hardwood floor and <laughs> <laughs> you are you able to, to do that easily and you he doesn't say anything but Hugo glances at you for a moment and uh, as you lay down he reaches out and he pulls you closer to him, and he puts one of his arms around you, and he endeavors to keep you warm through the night. I love him. Well, I think we did it. I think everything's okay. We stopped the night of sin. Nobody got turned into gross, abominable nations. Yeah. Uh, the moon, nothing, nothing happened there. Yeah, I'm not sure we've done much of anything. 
None of this has felt like a victory. Well, we stopped a fucking ritual, right? That was the goal. Although, Yogrim did, you know, smacked a cupcake out of my hand. <laughs> it could have been a horrible ancient witch, Briggsy. You was, was going to eat a cupcake that she had? She didn't look like a witch. They never do! Well, look, I think we've dealt with all the witches in full sense, all right? I think we checked that box, and I think she was just a nice girl trying to offer us a treat. And I was the gentleman, and I said, of course, I would love to try your cupcake. And you were all rude about it, and smacked my floating zombie hand right out of the sky. And, I'll and never you're forget welcome, that. okay? You can't even taste food. You're very strong. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 he blushes. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Put it like that. I'll go back to the bakery. I'll get you a cupcake. Uh, that was pretty good, raising that, uh, you know, burning beam off of the two. You are very strong, aren't you? <sighs> well. Like that scene from Les Miserables. <laughs> the second I saw Marius stuck Wait. under that pillar, I knew he'd need help. In uh, this that, world, it's called the Miserable. The Miserables. Oh, that the makes miserable. me think. Yeah, the Miserables. Yo, can this be true? I can't believe what I saw. <laughs> An orc your age, to be as strong as you are. A memory stirs. <laughs> you made me think of an orc. <laughs> From years ago, <laughs> an orc that broke his parole. <laughs> this, this is a romantic, this is not. He disappears. <laughs> this isn't this one. This is he's confused. This is not. This is not. You. This is Wednesday, not Wednesday. Forgive me, sir. I will not tell. <laughs> Prisoner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold um, on. Hold on. I will never reach. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you may be right. She may have just been a simple girl, but Yorgrim's also right. We can't take the risk. That's fine. I'll get over it. All right. I appreciate the concern. It's the fault that counts. And in this case, you were thinking out for my own well-being. I appreciate that. There could have been teeth in the cupcake. It was bergamot. I would track with the last time. That would have been pretty gross. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, Virgil, you're awful quiet. Looking, your eyes are looking a little bit more clear and calculated. That's probably nothing wrong with that. Well, good night to you too. Oh, well, that's ominous. Anyways. Uh, Gar, you know, I'm gonna feel good. I feel like this is a win. We, we killed the Archbishop. Uh, we killed, we stopped the demons. Mother Midnight got that nasty curse from, uh, your fine lady. <coughs> Respectfully said. The maiden, yes. Well, that was, that was very impressive. Well, I appreciate your optimism, to say the least. Well, you know, I would always say is always look on the bright side of life. Or approximation of life, um, in case you happen to be a scarecrow with found consciousness, with a demon inside, <laughs> takes the form of a weird, gross crow. That's the full stand of it. I shorten it to always look on the bright side of life. Or undead, vampire thrall. Oh, that's true. A zombie pirate. Et cetera, et cetera. Cursed by eternal rotting stink. We can look at this as maybe a victory for the moment, but the wounded, she escaped, she's out there, and we should stay on alert. We're still in Folsons, the town might be turning against us. We can't lose sight of that. Well, I don't hear any boisterous singing, so I think Van Brunt's probably nowhere nearby. Although, I mean, it, he went out in the woods to look for Maduff, didn't he? He said he was going to. I mean, is there a chance he's on, her way, on his way to air and, like... Well, I know, I think he needed, like, a... Don't fellas like that need to round up a posse, like we talked about, a posse? I think you remember that the plan was to do it in the morning. Oh, that's right. No, you're right. I recall that. <laughs> and at the very least, I'd like to think that she's not easy to find. 
Oh, That's I would true. Hope so. She's got all that fancy land magic. Farron, will the land magic work? What do you mean by that? Like work on what? Like you, you've got land magic. You're kind of a good witch. Like you remind me of a witch, but in a good way. <laughs> I don't really know how to respond to that, but... Like, do you think she that she maybe she and the little one are, are safe and sound? Free of, of angry mobs or posses? I think they'll be alright for the night. But we should plan to get up at first light. Maybe before first light. Get ourselves out of town and into the woods and see what we can find. And I have to say I'm, I'm a little worried now that we're here that we've left the body of the Archbishop. Oh, that's right. I'm not sure there's much we could do about that, given our state, where they all were, and the accusations that were starting to arise. It's true. And I'm starting to think that it was really just Virgil that wanted to chow down, and not like it's in a more general sense, you know? Uh, that is very concerning, to say the least. If the body's still there in the morning hours, maybe we should... I don't know. Well, now that we know... Take care of it on the way out of town. Now that we know what was going on here, we could take it back to our benefactor. Maybe he could handle it. Do you think they're gonna, like, have a grand funeral because he was the leader? I mean, there was a giant crowd around him. Oh, yeah, they don't really know how fucked up that dude was. They, I mean, they, they saw him shapeshift from a giant gargoyle demon, from what I heard earlier. I don't know. I was unconscious. Oh, that's true. Well, <laughs> you told me that except word for word, Briggsy. That was 15 minutes ago. Yeah, he said it was about 15 minutes ago. A little longer than that. A little longer. A couple hours ago. A couple hours ago. <clears throat> well, I mean, the dude was pretty beloved. And the thing is, you know, if anyone happened to see it, you know, would they be believed? Or would they think it'd be a monster that gets blamed on us? The people in this town are quite misguided. I don't know that we've got the time or the ability to change minds. Look, all I know is we did what old Philly D asked us to do, alright? We're gonna go back to that guy and tell him, look, mission accomplished. Now fucking give us what we've earned, right? That's all that I care about. I mean, that's not all that I care about. All right, fine. But, I mean, that's really what I care about. So we sleep, and we get the fuck out of here. I think a fine, swell plan. Agreed. Well, at least we can start with sleep. I'll check on Lethica and just make sure that she's still she seems comfortably still being be held by Hugo. And she is warm and comfortable by the fire. Um, he has a, um, a tin cup that he is um, boiling water and he waits for it to cool down and he slowly gives it to her. It's a nice, um, it's a hot tea without the leaves, um, but he is doing his very best to keep her hydrated and to keep her comfortable um, as he sings a song in a language none of you understand. Um, but he sings her a little lullaby as he wow. rocks her to sleep. That's real sweet. And the rest of you sleep for the night? I'm assuming Good you're art. all going to sleep in I'm the I'm going to get in the exact same bed that I slept in. Oh, you're going upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upstairs. I'm going upstairs. I'm in the same bed. If it probably, I don't know if it's been like torn apart. But yeah, if, there, no. if there's I still agree. beds for everybody, yeah. then I would probably... The same room? Yeah. We were all in the same room. We were all in the same room. We crammed them. Um, yeah. I'm going to stay down with Hugo. And Hugo, Lethakun, Farron, you all stay Boys next man. to the fire, curled up, um, and you find sleep there. It comes to you easy. The rest of you make your way upstairs to the room that you're familiar with. Uh, first walking into it, it is a little bit of a shock, Jorgrim. You have memories here. Memories with your would-have-been daughter. And this room brings back a lot of them. The slumber parties, the story time, it's all here in this room. But you steal yourself to it, and you too eventually find sleep. Sleep takes all of you. I'm and for this one night in Cyril, in Druskenvald, 
You have a dreamless sleep. Oh. A peaceful sleep. Oh. A refreshing sleep. I go back in the broom closet. Well, good night. <laughs> <laughs> it is in stark contrast to the way that you wake up which is to the shouts and screaming that is coming from the town square. You hear the lashing of whips, the neighing of horses. Whatever is happening in the town square is loud, and all of you jolt out of bed, caught off guard, all at almost exactly the same time. As you hear a loud, booming voice for but a second, you can't make out the words that are being said, but there is something important happening in the town square. I wait with a start. <clears throat> Virgil's startled. Oh, this cannot oh. be good. Does Lethica wake up? Lethica does not wake up. Hugo, you stay here with Miss Lethica. We're gonna go check out and f- see what's going on, right? Correct. Protect <laughs> Dragging her along, let's go! <laughs> Hold on, I have to take 10 minutes to put on my armor. <laughs> <laughs> no, you sleep in your armor like <laughs> Like that. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I mean, I am going to sleep. <laughs> I was sleeping, and then when everybody woke up, I'm like, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, feet, feet up in bed. Yeah. <laughs> the stinger is Mary Slay's back. Good evening. <laughs> I mean, uh, good night. Good night. <laughs> uh, just kidding. None of that happens. Uh, I agree with my my companions, and we decide to rush to find where the, we away. Of the shouting is coming from. We away to the town square. You rush towards the town square. It doesn't take you long. You know how to get there. And the Mirabel House isn't that far from the town square itself. Um, the Archbishop liked to keep his family close. And they had the nicest house closest to the cathedral. And as you pass the burning ruins of the cathedral, it is now nothing but smoldering embers. Um, you see the scene at the town square much sooner than you would have if it still stood. In the very center of the town square, encircling the fountain, you see at least 20 men on horseback. One of them, clearly taller, clearly stronger, clearly more handsome than the rest. William Van Brunt is leading the charge as he is calling out with a booming voice and shouting to a mass of people who have accumulated in the, in the town square. At first, some of them seem reticent, hesitant about what's going on, but as he continues to talk, as his charm continues to infiltrate the the citizens of, of Cyril, they begin to cheer and clap and rally with him. You sneak around the side and you find a place um, just um, just off the um, the smoldering embers or the smoldering ruins of the cathedral, a place that you are out of sight but can watch with a bird's eye view, or not with a bird's eye view, you can watch with a, um, a front row view. A rat eyes and view. Rat eyes view, perfect, thank you. And you are able to see this image a bit more clearly. The, whether it was William Van Brunt and his posse, or whether it was the town folks themselves, the body of the Archbishop has been strung up on the fountain <gasps> and uh, desecrated. Oh, you oh. see that it has, um, there are signs nailed into it. <gasps> Villain. Um, uh, witch, witch believer. Um, oh. Heretic. Um, sinner. Ungodly. Oh my God. Enemy, uh, horrible things written here about the Pope. The people of Cyril have clearly turned against him. And you watch as William Van Brunt hushes the crowd around him for a minute as his horse rides up. It almost saunters. His horse almost as cocky as he is as, it's, as he rides out into the very center of these people. Citizens of Cyril, I'm William Van Brunt. You know me, you love me, I love all of you. And today, we are going to kill the last witch in full sense. And all of the, all of the um, horse riding men begin to cheer and clap, and not just them. For you know that evil lurks among you. 
those horrific monsters that the Archbishop brought into our town fed us his lies so that they could get close to you and your family, your children, your loved ones. They are the enemy, and they are led by one most evil. Maggie McDuff will die, and so will her child, Familia! And they all begin to cheer and chant. You hear, kill the witch, down with the witch, the witch will die. And as he saunters forward on his horse one more time, I, William Van Brunt, will save Cyril from the heretics. I will save this city. I will protect you. You have my word. Ride out, men! He charges forward, and all of them fall in line behind him, including on the smallest pony that you could possibly imagine. One, Percy Phipps, sidles up right next to William Van Brunt, and they all charge out of Cyril to cheers and applause and the shouts of burn the witch, save the city. William Van Brunt for mayor. William Van Brunt, our new leader. Billy, 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 Billy. And that is where we'll end the session. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that fucking pamphlet. <laughs> 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 <laughs>